like the things that people were telling me that couldn't be captured, that weren't written down, that would have been lost, mm -hmm. have a, as much important or more importance as the so-called official history, right? So, I mean, there's some, like one of my neighbors used to tell me about when she first came here from South Carolina, she would write a letter home every week, you know, and there, that's like a huge, there's a huge archive of that somewhere or nowhere anymore, right? right? right. So there's a sort of like, just trying to, that's as important to me or more important uh, the things that aren't written down or aren't collected as what ends up in the library. The Lee moment, but something that I just remember going back to was in In Search of Our Mother's Gardens. She's, she sort of mentioned, there's of course her essays about Zora Neale Hurston, but more, I think one thing that struck me more was this mention of Jean Toomer mm -hmm. as someone that was so transformational to her. And, um, and I probably went to the library to find out like who was that, you mm -hmm. know, and then sort of trying to figure out well, who are these other people. And it's funny, I remember like if, of course there were so many writers who were active at that time, many of them were not necessarily in Harlem, but they become classed as part of the Harlem Renaissance, whether they were Jesse Fawcett in DC or other people in other cities. And I would remember looking and I would sort of look and say, okay, this book is not about Harlem, I don't want to read it right now. So I was even within that time period, even though there was so much else going on, like if it wasn't about Harlem, I didn't want to read it. My mother had a copy of um, the letters of Langston Hughes and Arna Bontemps, and if they weren't writing about Harlem, I would sort of like skip through, like you were like going for the nasty bits in a book, and I was sort of like, where's the Harlem bits? Like, right. Before so, Christmas, I saw a sign for a food and clothing drive sponsored by the new Black Panther Party, a benign implementation of the original 10-point party platform with which even the Boy Scouts could agree. A more militant articulation could be found on the sign advertising a boycott that never gained much support. The People's Committee says to boycott Jimbo's. McDonald's, Burger King, White Castle hire blacks in Harlem. Why not Jimbo's? Other signs ask other pressing questions. A document of several pages was posted to a lamppost on my block. The first page was titled, Black Inventors, Extraordinary Inventions. The subsequent pages contained a list detailing those inventors and their inventions. At the end of this dossier, as if the names were evidence in some tribunal about what used to be called racial feeling, there was a plea that was both damning and sorrowful. Why are the grandsons of these people not even working in their country? I mean, I guess for me, I feel like the Schomburg is this place where like a lot is being acted out that happens in the rest of the neighborhood, which is like this quest for knowledge, yeah. like, um, which is the basis of so much. Like this, I reference like the, I talk about the history of the founding of the Schomburg from Arthur Schomburg's own, you know, many of you know this well, but how he was told as a child that black people had no history. And that's what started his whole quest, right? So in a way, like almost every person that goes there is still replicating that original quest, right? Mm -hmm. Like to sort of find some point, and I would sort of be there doing my own work because I was through all these years doing freelance work, and sometimes I would be writing an article about Liberia, so I had to like learn all this stuff about Liberia in a week, or like something about Haiti. So I would go and just immerse myself in to do my work, but then I was also overhearing what brought other people there, and sometimes it was something like they had a house and there was a family dispute and they needed legal research, and even though that's not something the Schomburg could offer you. This is this, there was this sense that like if you went there like your answers could be um, you could get your answers mm -hmm. or something sort of some more fantastical like in the book I mentioned this man who says he's looking for a map with everything right. on it Tanzania <laughs> and Kemet which were like two different maps right because Kemet is sort of the more Afro mystical name for Egypt and yeah. Tanzania is a modern political designation so like the idea that there could be a map with both of those things on it is really yeah. quite fantastic yeah. so you would find like all these people with just we all had different quests and we were all like on this quest together like in the reading room and it, it's true like research is not interesting and I remember another ver like the first essay that I wrote that sort of led to this book and there was a sort of section about the library and my editor was like that's not that interesting and what I thought about it is well to me when I think of literature I think of so few scenes when the the like acts of that quest of, for black people in the search of knowledge is acted out on the page it's not done the very last page was either a cryptic answer to the question or exhibit A in a separate charge. It was a poorly reproduced photograph of a lynching amidst the crowd of spectators a little white girl in a white frock flanked the charred and mutilated corpse. She was squinting, looking at the body with her head cocked to one side. Why don't you look at me? Thus began a screed posted on 125th Street 
the work of an anonymous Latter-day pamphleteer who said, Attention new residents of Harlem, aka Washington Heights, etc. Please be aware that you are contributing to the active displacement of the historic Harlem community. Yes, gentrification, which is a pretty word for modern day colonization. You cannot blame the politicians or real estate brokers as long as you are willing to pay exorbitant prices for the same residential property that was once affordable. As you see more white, Asian, and others of economic advantage, you will see less blacks and Hispanics. Economic racism, are you the problem or the solution? There is no neutrality. But do you see us, it continued. Because this is a neighborhood, we, specifically I refer to where you're reading this sign, where we look at each other and even greet the people we see daily. Why aren't you looking at us? Is it guilt? Are you purposefully ignoring me? Are you afraid of me? This is often seen as a sign of disrespect, and if you are afraid, it would behoove you to look at people. How will you know who is an actual threat to, how, who is an actual threat to you? Learn about and respect the places you decide to live, but, it would, but even better would be for you to decide to live somewhere else because where are we supposed to go?